Hey everybody, don't mind the mess of the shop. It's that time of year. Finally gonna get this razor going. I've had some issues, got some water. You uh, might have seen me going through the water a few times. Water in the throttle cable seized up on me. Not a good thing. So I've replaced that and you might hear this. I don't think it's supposed to do that. So this happened at the last run of last season. Broke that axle, the CV joint at the bottom. I'm gonna change that out, but first of all, I'm going to do a little bit of a tune-up on this as far as uh, uh, lubrication goes. We're gonna lubricate all the fittings. We're gonna change the oil in it. The fuel is from last September. It's full, but it's old, and we all know that fuel doesn't last long anymore. So I've got this Shelburne enhancer to go in there to fix all that up. I've got Shelburne's uh, four stroke oil, it's gonna go in there and Shelburne's oil additive. It's gonna go in there as well. So let's get that done. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's very easy. Even have an oil filter. So there's been no oil or no water contamination. I know that because I check this all the time. You know, after every water crossing, or day of water crossings, I'll come through, check the oil, check the rear diffs. Any kind of frothy looking, milky looking uh, oil means that you have water contamination in it. I'll check these uh, diffs as well, make sure everything looks good, and then, uh, and then we're good to go. That engine oil, she needed a change. I heard a clunk, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> it was just a seal for the plug. You don't like to hear clunks coming out of your crankcase as a rule. There we go. I'm just doing this by hand. I'm not doing this with a, any kind of a power tool because you're going to run into issues and you're going to strip something. Oil's out. I'm just gonna check that rear diff slash transmission. Check the quality of the fluid in there. You know, if it were really black or full of water, obviously I'd change that out. And I wouldn't let it sit all winter like that either. Now the Machine is sort of angled down. So we're not gonna get a, a true level. I'm gonna poke that in there. You can see that still got that nice purpley color. That looks good. We're fine here. I don't have very many miles on it, so I'm not gonna change that out. There's no contamination doesn't need it. That's what they call false economy. When you're changing things for no reason. All right. These are the kind of things you can do yourself. You don't need to bring this machine in every time it needs a little something. And this is a very simple thing to do. These grease fittings need to be greased Regreased after every water crossing. Another thing you're going to want to do, wherever there is a shaft that enters some part of a transmission or a motor or whatever, you want to make sure that there's no grass, weeds, whatever hung around. So if you're doing some water crossings, even if you're driving through a field, through the grass, whatever, they'll get in there and they'll work their way in around the seals then they're gonna blow a seal on you. You don't want that to happen. So you wanna go in there, make sure the U-joints are all nice and clean, clear. You wanna grab your uh, impellers or your shafts, move them around, make sure that there's no play in the U-joints. If there is, you gotta take care of that. Like you got, it. got your A-arm fittings here. You're just gonna to wanna to see a little bit come out. You don't really have to nail it hard. There's only one on the top. 
you'll see it start to squish out. And there's one in the very bottom. So I've got another Zerk fitting there, or a grease fitting, but I'm gonna have to put a new nipple on that, or a Zerk fitting as they call it. But right now, I'm gonna lower this. We're gonna hit the shafts that are on the inside here. Some people might call them the intermediate shafts. We'll get to that. So now we're gonna go inside. I've got it apart because I had to run a new throttle cable through it, so it's gonna be easy to see, but you can grease this from the bottom, this intermediate shaft, and that'll also give us access to the engine, and then we can put our new oil in there. You can see that fitting right here, and there is an opening or an inspection port at the very bottom, so you can actually come up through the bottom and you can hit that one no problem. It goes on a little bit of an angle. I've done that before. You can see this carrier bearing, got some weeds around it. I'm pull those out. That's no good. Get that out of there. And everything else looks good in here. There's going to have some movement in that. That's fine. Right on. You, know, you guys might notice with these machines that you do have driveline vibration in them. And that's normal. Because of stuff like that. There's an angle on there. And this is going to want to have a tendency to wobble up and down, but that U-joint is good, solid, that's good. Right on, okay, let's get that, these seats out. I'll take it right here. Filter. Let's see how tight they put that on. Nope. Okay. Universal removal tool. Or what we call new special. Yep. I have a really nice snap on strap wrench. That's around somewhere. There's really no way to prime that, right? No. All I'm just doing is lubing up that seal. Use that wrench to tighten it, eh? Mm -hmm. No. Now I'm dealing with this. I'm not going to use a wrench, but I am going to do it hand tight. And after the first warm up, I'll come back and make sure it's tight again. First thing I'm going to do is use Shelburne's additive, oil additive. He told me to use it with this 2050 oil. I know some of you guys are going to say, oh, you shouldn't be using 2050 oil. But I do what John Shane from Shelburne says because he knows his magic. He's been creating the oils for these types of machines since the 70s. Not even this type of machine. I guess you could say every type of machine that's out there. So when he speaks, I listen. So this oil is colored. When it changes to black, that means all the detergents are out of it. All the things that make it work are out of it, worn out. So it's time to change it. And it also has a dye in it, fluorescent dye, 
that when it leaks somewhere, you can just put a light on it at night and you'll see where it's coming out of. Pretty handy. Now I could have looked up how much oil this thing takes, but of course I didn't. I think I thought it was around the four liter mark. So I'm good. Start it up here in a second. Hmm. Well, it's still got to fill the fi the oil filter up. Close that. Put my cap on it. I do love this motor. It's got a lot of power. Runs great. Okay, just gonna start it up for a second. New oil, nice filter. Good to go. It's going to take a little bit more. Can't wait to get that axle back on, then I can start running this baby again. We're trying to get it in action for the endurance races in Latouk, Quebec. We'll have to get some stuff done pretty quickly. Check my dipstick. I'm going to check this temperature when it's cold. Check the oil about midway. I'm just going to put a bit more in it, and then I think we're going to be good. The full mark. Here, check that out. Good to go. There's only one thing left to do. I'm going to have to, well, there's a couple things I have to do. I'm going to have to fix that fitting up there. I'll put this all back together. Don't need to do that on cam. Get this out of here. That old gas in there is not good. So I've got this enhancer and it's my fault. I'm gonna tell you right now. I should have put a, a stabilizer in here in the fall. It's been, what are we now? Hey? Yeah. So it's May now. Um, I parked this in September. September, October, November, December, January. February. It's been a long time. I should have put a stabilizer in here. I didn't. But this enhancer right here has a, a, a neutralizer for ethanol. So it's going to beat the uh, ethanol all the way down. It's going to knock it on its butt. And it's also going to bring the fuel back to where it was supposed to be um, as far as octane rating goes. So it's going to make it run like it's brand new fuel. And that's a good thing. And that's why I love Shelburne products. Now this is the stuff that I should have put in last year. That's the fuel stabilizer. It actually creates a coating on top of the fuel. It doesn't allow the, um, the air to get at the fuel and the octane uh, to lower, to reduce. It doesn't allow moisture to accumulate in the fuel. And it also kills that nasty or neutralizes that nasty ethanol that we have to deal with. Just about every fuel you buy now has ethanol in it. Even if it says it doesn't, don't forget the pipeline that it comes in. You know, they don't have separate pipelines for uh, 87 octane or 89, 91, and 94, and whatever. It all comes through the same darn pipe. So 
chances are very good that you're gonna have ethanol in some of your fuels and that stuff's gonna fix it. Now I have to put this in all my snowmobiles. But I gotta thank you guys for coming back. Stay tuned, I'm gonna change out the axle in this beast, get it all boxed back together. We're gonna be running some tires from ITP, checking them out, we're gonna do a bunch of reviews, some cool stuff, and hopefully we'll have this up and running for the endurance races at La Touque, Quebec. So thanks for watching, guys. Get impossible